because the accused number two is just for handing over a firearm to me the statements were about him handing over the firearm to me everybody said when they were playing a video we can't see him handing over a firearm today the magistrate says no that is not the charge the charge is supply and broad thing like that we don't know as we stand here what is the actual charge of our choose number two and then we must keep quiet to nurse a feeling of a white woman we welcome welcome guys to the wsxm podcast where a united africa is an undisputed africa so here's the jealous malam is giving this fiery speech and he's talking about the the magistrate and he's i'm telling you this guy is he's unbelievably um so a straight, a straight shooter he cannot be blackmailed they cannot use him because he's outspoken and his life is an open book the next president of south africa julius malema election is next year so we're gonna in the next year a few months so we're gonna see what's gonna happen but listen to this speech and listen to it in its entirety and let me know what you think about it in the comment section boom we are here today after five years of being accused of having discharged a firearm the state has kept me here for the past five years because they can't defeat my political ideas they want to use the courts and abuse the state power and the security forces to suppress my voice and they will never win against me for because i'm not scared of prison when you are a revolutionary prison is your nickname because when you join the revolution there are two things that will happen you either attain what you stand for or you'll be killed for what you stand for not prison can stop me from executing that which i stand for no racist magistrate can stop me from executing that which i stand for no small boy of a prosecutor can persecute me and jail me for what i stand for for because i'm not scared of a magistrate i'm not scared of a prosecutor i'm not scared of a judge i'm not scared of a president i'm not scared of capitalism i'm not scared of white monopoly capital i'm not scared of anyone i want all of them combined the day of victory shall come because that day you are destined for and when you are destined for victory no one can stop you from making it to that day of victory so fighters we must never be shaken by persecution of our leadership not only in the courts but in the media through journalists that are part of the establishment we must not be scared of those who are using state institutions like sars like the hawks like the police to try and suppress a dissent comrades when we joined and took the position to go against the ANC, we all knew that this is part of the price we'll have to pay. So when it happens to us, we are not shocked. We, we are always ready for that day. And when that day comes, we know that day has arrived. The enemy has decided to persecute us. We have postponed the case to July because we did not agree that we must hold the case before elections because they want to hold us here while they are busy campaigning outside so we said to them we are not coming back here until after the elections we will come back here and to sit and listen to that incompetent magistrate who comes late to court who can't get the papers in order who can't read their own judgments who adjourns the court during judgment to go back seat and receive Praveen Gordon's call and receive Ramaphosa's call and receive Batoy's call when she comes back to give a judgment she's shaking like hell because it's not a judgment it's a sponsored judgment 
Where have you ever had such a thing that a magistrate lives in the middle of a judgment to go behind the court and when she comes back she's shaking like a little girl being asked in grade one to give an English presentation in front of her classmates. I know the lawyers will say, why does he speak about the magistrate like that? I don't care about her feelings, I care about the law. What does the law say? Not what the magistrate feels. Comrades, a magistrate comes to court that was postponed for so many days with papers that are all over. She can't read her own notes. Her judgment is so disorganized, then she's, what is even worse, there must be a separation of powers between a magistrate and the police. When she comes into court, she says to a police officer, go and fetch judgment, I forgot it in the office. The magistrate must be the only person who sees the judgment. The judgment must sit here on the magistrate. She leaves a judgment in the office. A police officer sees the judgment because the magistrate said, go and fetch my judgment. What type of incompetence is this? What type of nonsense is this that we are subjected to for the past five years of an incompetent white magistrate? If it was a black magistrate, these people would have written about her, that she's disorganized, she doesn't know how to read, she doesn't know how to write. Because it's a white magistrate, they don't say she's incompetent. She is incompetent. When she delivers her judgment, you can see that she's not sure, she's not convinced, it's not her own conviction. I don't care about my judgment. I care about the judgment of accused number two. She changes, she amends the charge sheet from the box, from the bench. Because the accused number two is just for handing over a firearm to me. The statements were about him handing over the firearm to me. Everybody said when they were playing a video, we can't see him handing over a firearm. Today, the magistrate says no, that is not the charge. The charge is supply and broad thing like that. We don't know as we stand here, what is the actual charge of accused number two. And then we must keep quiet to nurse a feeling of a white woman. We don't care about feelings of anyone. We care about what does the law say. I said this knowing very well that on the 15th of July, I'm going to appear before her. I'm not saying this here. I will say it to her. Because I'm not scared of her. I will tell her, you are not applying the law. The reason why you did not discharge accused number two, you were scared of releasing a white man and leaving a black man in the dock. What type of law is that? The guy must continue to be charged because if he's released, it will look like we are persecuting a black man. You are persecuting me, whether you release Adrian or not. The reality is that you are looking out, you are looking for me. You don't want Adrian, you have nothing against Adrian. Release my white man and face me alone. I don't need anyone, I can stand up to all of you alone. I don't want people to die for my sins. I die for my own sins. I will never start that which I will never finish. Everything I start, I finish it. So comrades, that's what we are dealing with and we'll deal with that after elections. From here, in our mind, there is no court. There is no case. In our mind, is voter. We must go after voters because we need to take this state and stop this nonsense and send this magistrate to a retirement home because he doesn't deserve to sit on the bench where she is. We are now going to campaign. We are going to do what the student command is doing 
in all institutions of her learning. Abu Gogo, go and eat the ANC food, take their blanket, take their food parcels on the day of election, vote EFF. Because those blankets are not ANC blankets, those are your taxpayers' money. Those food parcels, you know, the student command, I like them, uh, former national chair. They go inside the ANC meeting and take ANC t shirts and eat ANC KFC and juice. When they finish, they don't take off the ANC t shirts. They sing EFF songs in ANC t shirts. I saw some of them, Eme Shumile Minyanga. Wearing ANC t-shirt, Gerea, these comrades are brutal. In Univen, the ANC called a big rally for students to vote for Sasco. They packed the stadium. They called all types of artists, including those untalented Mufango artists, to go and appear. The following day, the badge was so big, the EFF student command defeated the youth league sasco uh, pya movango a uh, master kg everything put together the eff defeated them <laughs>